great to see so many people here this evening, politicians, community leaders, party activists, lots of new members, and both Toronto Centre and Trinity Spadina. I'm relatively new to politics. I was raised in St. Catharines, Ontario, in Otto City, by a single mom. And growing up, we didn't have party memberships, we didn't put out lawn signs. I don't even recall a politician ever actually knocking on our door. But my mom is from Belfast, and the Irish have the gift of the gab. <laughs> so every night, my mom, my sister, and I would sit down at the kitchen table, and we'd talk about the issues of the day in our lives. Everything from where the food on our plate came from, to the idea of childcare for teen moms at our Catholic high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, come on in. And I've always had big questions about the world around me. Questions about women's rights, questions about the environment, questions about poverty. And I chose a career in journalism to ask these very questions. So I could have a megaphone to broadcast issues of social justice across the country. I worked as a TV host, reporter, and producer at CBC, at CTV, and at CHUM. And the work was never boring. It took me to the West Bank, where I was tear gassed alongside Israeli conscientious objectors, to the streets of downtown Toronto, where I was chased by police with batons covering the G20 protests, to a one-hour special with Jack Layton, where I asked him, Jack, have you ever inhaled? <laughs> His response, most say he never exhaled. <laughs> That interview was 11 years ago at Much Music. And at Much, I also interviewed Prime Minister Paul Martin and soon to be Prime Minister Stephen Harper. But Jack and the NDP were different. They created the time and the space for young people, and they listened to what we had to say. And I will never forget that. Now, the challenge in TV these days, and uh, a couple TV crews in the room. So the sound bite is down to six seconds. Mm. So how do you cover a story on ISIS, or a story on climate change policy, or a story on poverty in First Nations communities in six seconds? And it was covering these types of stories and learning about these issues where I realized I had to do something. I had to move from just asking questions <coughs> to finding answers. Taking that broadcaster's megaphone and using it as an organizer's megaphone. So after 13 years of working in the media, I left and I joined the NDP. <laughs> now, this decision surprised some people. Politics, as you know, is a dirty word. People often say, ah, I hate politics, or they call it politrix, or good luck with that. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't blame them. People can feel that the system is broken. But I don't think politics is just over here in Ottawa happening to us. We are politics. Politics is in this room. Politics is in the annex. Politics is in Seton Village. Politics is in Little Italy. It's in Kensington Market. It's in Chinatown. It's in Yorkville, and it's in Rosedale. And around here, our neighborhoods are like small towns where everyone knows each other. I'm seeing lots of nods. Yeah, you bump into people, they want to know your business. Yeah, <laughs> right? But people are talking. They're talking about what's going on. And that's where the work starts. Politics is about people. Now, in the NDP, our leaders are active. They're engaged in the community. It's no surprise when you bump into an NDP politician and she's swimming laps at the JCC, or he's riding his bike down the street on the coldest day of the year. That's you, Joe. <laughs> and that's because we live it. We have long tradition of that. From Don Heath to Joe Cannelloni to Rosario Marchese, to our city councillors who are here, Mike Layton and Joe Cressy, school board trustee, Osma Malik. Osma! <laughs> and Olivia Chow. <laughs> Last year, I spent 
just about every hour I had working on your campaign. With many of you in this room, we have the t-shirt right there. And we know no one works harder than Olivia Chow. And even though we didn't get the results that we had hoped for, Olivia inspired people in the city. Thousands of people were engaged, many for the very first time, organizing in their communities. So everyone in the city has a voice. And no one in no neighborhood is left behind. And that work continues. Now, over the last several weeks, I've been working with an incredible team of volunteers, and thank you all so much, organizing coffee parties in members' homes. And we have had a lot of fun. I have met members who joined the party the year I was born, in 1975. <laughs> and I met new members, like Emily, who said she was a bit intimidated to get involved with a party, but a coffee party seemed like a friendly and welcoming place to start. There were also lots of impromptu things that happened at these coffee parties, like at the one coffee party there was a breakout classroom for kids, and the adults were even getting involved. And at another, the one on, on Saturday, we had a special performance by Ken Whiteley. Uh, there was a piano in the room, and he gathered us all around and started playing a song, and he asked us to sing the chorus. And the chorus was, give your hands to struggle. Now, of course, we were around the kitchen table at these parties, so we were talking about the issues. And there was a long list. But the three most pressing issues that came up time and time again were one, growing inequality in our city and across the country. Two, the environment. And three, jobs, good jobs. There was technically one other social issue that kept coming up. There was a lot of debate on if it was a social issue. In the end, we agreed. The social issue of Stephen Harper. <laughs> <laughs> and his long list of failures. There's also the other party, the liberals, that have taken turns over the last several decades with the conservatives, creating policies that erode our middle class and continuously keep us at war. Now, Justin Trudeau, while sure charming, has failed to stand up to Stephen Harper. He actually agrees with him. There is only one leader who can stand up to Stephen Harper. There is only one leader with the experience the principle, the hard work, and the focus, and he holds Harper accountable day in and day out in the House of Commons, and that is our leader, the leader of the official opposition, the leader of the NDP, Thomas Mulcair. childcare. Tom is a leader with a plan to raise the federal minimum wage, a plan to create sustainable jobs and support small businesses. Now a lot of people have also been asking me, when is this election? Is it in the spring? Is it in the fall? Is it before or after the soon to be released Mike Duffy reality TV show? <laughs> I don't know. But I do know that the work starts tonight. I'd like to thank all of, your, all of you in this room for your incredible work in this community year after year. I'd like to thank you for joining me tonight and encourage you to sign up to volunteer as well as make a donation. <coughs> University of Rosedale is a new writing with new possibilities, but a writing with deep social democratic roots with your help will bloom again this year. So I ask for your support to ensure that University of Rosedale's first Member of Parliament, your Member of Parliament, is NDP. Thank you so much.